Hello, Oakwood. I'm Oakwood art therapist Jennifer Bethel, and this is Creating a Studio. This series will explore the idea of creating a studio in your own space, in your own home, with what you have, without buying anything, without making anything, without having to do anything but draw from what you already have surrounding you. I know that sounds easier than um, it sounds harder than it will be, um, but we're going to make it happen because I find that I've been dreaming of having a studio all my life and there's always something that gets in the way. And I imagine if you're like me and you've dreamed of having a, an art studio or a writing studio, music studio, or a workshop of some space and you put it off or you said, ah, oh, I'll do that when I'm older, I'll do that when my bills are paid. I'll do that when there's more time. And you found, like me, those things never happen. What's true is we do get older, right? And um, and sometimes our excuse is, well, I'm too old now, so I can't make that happen. That's a terrible excuse. We are still here. We're still alive. And we can make anything happen. So this series is going to really look at creating a space when there's no space available and creating an, a space that's all of, all our own. Not just a physical space, but a space in our mind and in our time, because I think that's where our hangups are. Our excuses are in our, in our head, right? We stop with our excuses right there and these things we think about or dream about never come to be. So this is about creating an art space, an art studio in your own space with what you have surrounding you. You're not to buy anything. You're not to go looking for anything. It's kind of hard to do those things today anyways. So we are going to start with what we have. So today we're going to talk about um, excuses. So I've written down my excuses to never getting started on my own art studio. So for a long, long time, um, I've told myself I have no time. And this year has taught me I have lots and lots of time. And yet that time gets filled with lots of things and sometimes nothing at all. So there's time. I know there's time. So my number one excuse is I have no time. Now, if you want to create your list of excuses too, that would be really helpful. So what stops you? What gets in your way when you think about the things you want to do, but you never do them? So my excuses. Number two, no space. Even in a a house for a family, I always find I have no space. If there's space, it tends to go to someone else or get used for something else. I find if I have a table, it's covered in all kinds of other things and everything has to be moved from place to place in order to use that table space. So if you're like me, you've made the excuse, excuse of no space. My number three excuse is someday I'll, someday I'll do that. One day, one of the excuses I've had for a long time about an art studio is that I dreamed of having a barn. Well, I've come to the conclusion at my age that I'm probably no longer going to own a farm. Um, I'm probably not gonna buy a, a home that has barns or outbuildings on it. So I've gotta work with what I have. and. Not give up my dream of a studio, but give up my dream of someday. Yeah, when someday when I have that barn, like the famous artist Chuck Close, I'll be all set. Well, probably not going to happen. Okay, my number four excuse is I'm good at making more excuses. So it brings me back to, I have no time. I have no space. Someday I'll get to that. And I can make up more excuses because I can do that pretty, pretty good. So make up your list of excuses and look at what's standing in your way. And we're going to look at the idea of overcoming this. We're going to create time. We're going to create that space when there's no space at all. We're going to get over this notion of someday, not someday. Today is the day. Today is the day we're getting started. Today, today is the day that I'm getting started with you. And number four, I'm going to get bad at excuses this year. I'm going to work on getting bad at excuses so that uh, I get better at seeing the possibilities. Okay, 
So one thing I wanted to share with you is artist Brian Andreas. He makes these from Iowa, Decorah, Iowa. I think he lives in California now, but for many years he lived in Decorah, Iowa, which is a really cool town if you ever get there. They've got some really cool art shops in this little town of a thousand people. Maybe it's more, but it's not much more than a thousand or two thousand people. And his studio is there. And today his studio is a little bit different. Um, he has artists create, recreating his art for him. He creates the paintings and then they stamp on it his stories, his little poems. And I knew somewhere along the way I had heard this and I thought, who wrote that quote? And so I went back to it today and I found that it is, in fact, Brian Andreas, this artist from Decorah, Iowa, who makes wood sculpture, um, figurative, I guess, uh, figure-like people out of uh, old barn board and wire. And on it, he stamps a small poem or a small sentence. And so on this one, um, he says, everything changed the day. She figured out there was exactly enough time for the important things in her life. Everything changed the day. She figured out that there was exactly enough time for the important things in her life. Wow. When I figure out that there is just enough time for all of the things that I love, then that's when life is going to change. So I'm changing life right now as we speak, as, as I'm speaking to you. Um, one thing I've noticed about really happy people or people that appear happy in their lives is that they do the things that they love. They're out there doing the things that they love. They're working, um, they're living, they're doing all the things that you and I have to do, but they're carving out that time for those things that they really love to do. So this series encompasses that, grabbing on, making time, carving out that time, that space for the things that we love to do. Now, maybe art isn't your thing, but maybe organizing is. So this could be helpful in that. And it could also help us see that in a very tiny space, we can make a little of our dreams come true. So like I said, I've been wanting an art studio for years and years and years. And in fact, I asked for a uh, an easel for Christmas and I got an easel, um, but it's an easel that will fold up and be put away. So I wanted this space to be a space in my home that would stay up and that I wouldn't pack it away, that people wouldn't pile their papers on, that people wouldn't come into, that it could be my own, if not um, for the next couple of months, maybe even longer. So um, here we are. I'm going to measure the space because I want to talk about how that small, tiny space in your room, in your apartment, in your home can be carved out. So I'm going to grab a tape measure. I'm going to come back and I'm going to measure my very little tiny space. Sometimes people will ask, where are you? Well, today I'm in my dining room. And for years and years, this little tiny corner behind me here was a pile of artwork and a little desk and became a toy corner and it was unusable because if we have a space in our house that we can stack things on, it's going to accumulate lots of stuff. So this is going to be my art space for uh, the next coming months. So I've got my tape measure. I'm gonna measure my corner here. And I'm also gonna show you before I measure that um, about choosing a space. Now a space that you can leave set up is really important, but also, a space that, um, you know, makes you feel invited, that feels warm to you. So I'm going to show you my view because I think, wow, this is a pretty spectacular view. So I've got this really fortunate view that I don't necessarily think about until I'm showing people like you how lucky I am to have this view. So this is my view with all the frosts on the trees. I live in the woods. And so that's the view I'm going to look out and see as I'm not only creating my space, but creating the art in my space. Okay, so I'm going to measure my space here. And if I stay in line with my cabinet here, I'm about 21 inches. And I have about three feet, a little more than three feet. So I have a three foot space and I'm gonna work three foot by less than three foot. So I'm going to work three foot by about 32 inches, 30 inches by 21. So that's a really small space. I'm working in three feet of space. Not very big. Let me see three feet here. Three feet. Not big at all, right? 
that's the space I'm going to create in. So while today I haven't created anything but have talked with you, next week is when I start creating my space. So um, for many years, I have used a TV tray as a space to work on. That is just fine. If that is what you have, wonderful. Sometimes I've even taken two of these and put a piece of board across the two of them and made, made my art desk. Some of you might have a piece of uh, masonite um, or um, some kind of other press board. Or you may just have a clipboard. That can be your tabletop or your clipboard could just be used on your lap. So I really want you to think what is going to work for you? What do you have on hand? And if you don't have it on hand, what could you maybe borrow from someone else? Or could you ask the studio, hey, do you maybe have this in the studio that I could borrow? Okay, so for next time, next Friday, the 15th, here's what we're going to do. So this week, I'm going to ask you to think. I'm going to ask you to think, number one, think about what kind of space you want. What do you want in that space? Um, what do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? Um, what chair could you use in that space? What can you use as your desk? Um, maybe it's not a desk at all. Maybe it's your chair and you're going to use a clipboard to draw on, or maybe you're just going to sit on the chair with your sketchbook. But I really would love you to carve out that space, create that space. So as we go through the weeks here, we can fill our space with our art, with our inspiration by um, taping up images that we love and that we're inspired by, or words, or even post-its, writing notes to ourselves. Number two, go and gather. So what I'm gonna do this week, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna gather the things in my home, remember, I'm not going out to the art store, I'm not going out to St. Vinny's, I am going through my home. This is all about reusing and repurposing and about the things that you love. So go through your home, find something that could serve as your art desk or your table. I'm going to look for my sawhorses and a board because I think that's where I'm going to, what I'm going to start with. Um, your TV tray, your, maybe you have an old desk, maybe you have, um, maybe you have an old dresser of some sort that can be kind of transformed. Maybe you like to stand when you work. Maybe you need to sit when you work. Whatever it is, I want you to go and gather it, to have it ready for next time. And together, we will start creating that studio. Okay, have a great week. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited about the spaces we will create together. Have a great week.